Hi, welcome to the IBM Spectrum Protect 714 Technical Overview. My name is Trisha Jong, and today I'll be walking you through the items on the left-hand side here. That includes the new features for the Spectrum Protect Server, Operations Center, Spectrum Protect Clients, Spectrum Protect for Workstation, Spectrum Protect for Space Management, and Spectrum Protect HSM on Windows. My colleague Sean Sperry will be doing a separate YouTube video to cover the line items on the right hand side of the page, including the Spectrum Protect for VE and Spectrum Protect for Snapshots. 714 GA on November 30th of 2015 with Spectrum Protect for Snapshots GA on December 11th. The first enhancement is for the NDMP clusterware backups on NetApps. This provides support in NetApp clusters, both as a cluster-wide view and a storage virtual machine view. When we do the backups and the restores, we are not impacted by the movement of data between the clusters. And this feature works with NDMP full or differential backups, as well as NDMP snap mirror to tape. We added cluster support for snap diff, which is not an NDMP type backup, in Spectrum Protect version 7.1.2. In order to do clusterware backups, you do need to have ONTAP 8.2 or later on the NetApp device. We do only support NetApp filers. The N-series do not have clusters enabled, and Spectrum Protect currently doesn't support other filers clusterware backups. You will have to define a new node and data mover inside of Spectrum Protect, even if you are currently backing up the NAS device with Spectrum Protect, and then you'll have to follow that by a full backup. We can backup directly to locally attached tape, and in this case, you have to have at least one drive attached to every node within the cluster to ensure that all the volumes are backed up. NDMP three-way support is not included, and so file systems and drives must be co-located on the same node or cluster. The drive can be shared with your Spectrum Protect server. If you are doing a storage virtual machine based backup, you will need to send the data across the network through the Spectrum Protect server and then have it write it out to one of the storage pools it has defined. So we do not support direct to tape for a storage virtual machine backup that's cluster aware. Slide 5 covers how Spectrum Protect sees the tape drives attached to the NAS clusters. The drives are connected to the nodes, and once again, the drives can be shared between a Spectrum Protect server and the NAS device. Cluster Affinity identifies the physical nodes on which a file system or tape drive exists. Now, because we don't support NDM3 way backup, the volume and tape drives have to be co-located on the same node in order to do the NDMP backups or restores. Spectrum Protect will go out and auto-define the data movers for each of the nodes in a cluster, but the user, the Spectrum Protect administrator, needs to define the paths. So in this example here, we have a NAS cluster, and the two data movers that are auto-defined include NAS cluster-01 and NAS cluster-02. When we look at the device name that we're going to use for defining the path, that will be slash NAS cluster dash zero one slash RS two L for the drive one that's attached to NAS cluster one and so forth. This becomes important when we look at slide six, where we're talking about how to define a NAS cluster to Spectrum Protect. The first piece that needs to be done is inside the NetApp device. The NetApp admin will need to configure the cluster for SVM scoped NDMP backup. In addition, they'll need to identify and define an ID and a password. And this will need to be remembered because we'll need that ID and password for the Spectrum Protect definitions. Finally, a network interface will be defined for the cluster. On the Spectrum Protect server, first of all, the admin will register the node with type equals NAS. And remember, even if you're currently backing up this node with NDMP, you will need to create a new node for the cluster. You'll then define a data mover with type equals NAS cluster. This is for a cluster-wide perspective on the backup. You'll need the high-level address, the user ID and password that were defined by the NetApp administrator, 
And then you'll go ahead and select and set up the paths to the tape drives inside of Spectrum Protect. If you are doing a storage virtual machine perspective for the cluster backup, the setup process inside of the NetApp device is, is pretty much the same. You'll configure the cluster for SVM scoped NDMP backup. You'll configure a user ID for each SVM on the cluster. And then you'll configure the network interfaces for the SVMs. Inside of Spectrum Protect, you'll register the node with type equals NAS. But when you define the data mover, you'll use type equals NAS V server, standing for NAS virtual server. You'll then need the high level address, the user ID, and the password. The next step will be to actually select a storage pool that exists inside of the Spectrum Protect server, and then set the policies appropriately. Another new enhancement for NetApp filers is 256K tape blocks. This helps to improve the performance on tab 8.3 or later as required, and this is only for NetApp devices. When we go to do the backup and restores, we can support either the 64K or the 256K, and the block size is actually being stored in the metadata information so that we know, okay, how is this written, 64 or 256? If you're utilizing an NDMP plugin, we set the newer block size to 256 during the backup, and then during the restore, we'll read the data block size NDMP environmental variable from that metadata and know the size. If you're using SS, which is your storage service remote path, the save block size is set in our storage format field. To summarize what I just talked about, Spectrum Protect 714 introduced the ability to backup clustered NetApp devices. These are either from a cluster-wide perspective or a storage virtual machine perspective. We also introduced the ability to do 256K tape blocks for NetApp filers. Another new enhancement in the Spectrum Protect server is some performance updates for our object store. In our previous version, 713, we introduced the idea of container storage pools. And when you write to container storage pools, you could have a on-premise or off-premise cloud storage pool. And when we wrote to these cloud storage pools, we're using object store methodology. With our new release, we've enhanced the performance for larger object workloads, up to 30% increase for the direct backup throughput for both the on-premise and the off-premise cloud containers. The end user doesn't have to do anything specific to enable this. They just need to be at version 714 on their Spectrum Protect server. We have a new blueprint for PLinux. The blueprints are a great set of documents that give you advice on the type of hardware and how to set up a Spectrum Protect server. It also gives you some scripts to automate that procedure. And so the new blueprint is for Linux on power for the big Indian. And this includes a new PDF reference, as well as new scripting. The hardware that we utilized is similar to our AIX blueprint, which would be Power 8 S822-L model. And the configuration steps will look similar to our Linux x86 blueprint. Moving on to the Operations Center. The first new enhancement is customized reporting. When you install the new 714 Operations Center, you'll see immediately that we have a report section on the main banner. And when you click this report section, you'll be taken to this screen. If you have not already defined a mail server, you'll still see two out of the box reports show up. Our general operations report, which was moved from underneath the world icon into this area, and a new license compliance out of the box report. Once you've gone through and set up a mail server, and in order to do that, you're going to need an admin ID, a mail server address, and a port number, you can then do things like add new reports. You can drill down and see the details of a report. You can request that a report be sent immediately instead of waiting for its scheduled time and date. You can choose to enable or disable specific reports, or you can delete reports. We do have a demo of this new feature out on YouTube. If you choose to add a new report by clicking the plus report button, you'll be prompted for a report name. You'll be asked at what time to send the report and if you want to send it every day or on specific days of the week. And then you'll need to choose either email addresses to send it to 
or a Spectrum Protect administrator who have email addresses in their profile. You can then choose to have the report run against all of the servers that are being monitored by this operation center. That would be your hub and spoke servers, or just have one specific Spectrum Protect server run this. You then enter a title for your first query and type in your SQL queries. Now the SQL queries, as you type them in, we will verify them and we'll pop up a message right above this line saying if, if there's any type of problem. One of the types of problems you might hit is you do have to be a systems administrator on that Spectrum Protect server in order to run SQL queries against it. You can have up to 1450 characters for that SQL query and 5,000 rows per query. So once you've filled out this ad report, you simply click save. And here I have on page 13, two examples of the reports. On the left-hand side is our general operations report. This was introduced in a previous version of our operations center. Here's an example of a new customized report where we've run two SQL queries. We have a server showing us our backup status and the schedule clients. Another new feature for the Operations Center is our NAS visibility. This gives us insight into the clients doing NDMP and snap mirror to tape backups. These would be Spectrum Protect nodes that are defined with type equals NAS. And under the clients area, you can actually do a filter on platform that contains NAS, and that will show just the NAS clients that are doing these NDMP and snap mirror to tape backups. You will also now see when the next scheduled backup should occur, what platform they reside on, and if those nodes are at risk. If you're to drill down into the details on these clients, you will first of all see the platform that they sit on. So we're here we have a NAS NetApp release 8.3p1. And if there's any current processes running, you'll have a two week overview of how much data has been backed up by that node. And if you hover over the blue bar, you'll see the breakout of full and differential backups and how many volumes are being protected. You'll also see if these nodes are being replicated to another Spectrum Protect server with node replication. If you drill down into the volume section of the detail report, you'll get to see that all of the volumes for that node and here you can easily tell if those volumes are being backed up or not. And so this is a good way to check that all of your NAS device volumes are being protected. For the ones that are actually being backed up, you'll see the last full and differential backups, and you'll see this last differential ratio, which is important to ascertain if your differentials are getting almost the same size as your fulls. And if that's occurring, you probably wanna take another full backup. Another new area that has been updated for NAS devices is under the services. And here we have added a table of content destination pool. The table of content is important for NDMP backups because it allows us to do individual file restores. So you can now set that table of contents or edit it by sliding the configure button. If you're creating a new management class, you'll now have the selection to enter a table of contents destination. So what we just talked about are the new features in the Operations Center. We've got the ad hoc reporting, and we've got the NAS visibility. Slide 16 covers the new platforms on the Spectrum Protect server. We now have SLES 12 for DB2 10.5 on our X Linux and Z Linux servers. On the Operations Center, we have added Java 8.0.2 and Liberty Server 8.5.5.7. For the Spectrum Protect client, we've added support for Windows 10, and this was actually added in version 7.1.3.2. There is no support for the Edge browser. Also with the Mac OS 10 El Capitan, we added support for that in 7.1.3.2. Our symbolic link locations have changed from user bin and user lib to user local bin and user local lib. We've added support for P Linux LE, and I have a whole slide covering that. For our IBM Spectrum Protect for Space Management, we've added support for Linux on Z systems for the IBM Spectrum Scale file systems. And for our Spectrum Protect for Workstation, we've added Windows 10 support for the client. On slide 17, we've added 
Spectrum Protect client support for P Linux LE for the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.1 and SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 12. This is known as the Little Indian or PLE, and it's based on our Power 8 systems. The file systems that are supported are all Linux file systems plus the Spectrum Scale 4.1.1.3, which is also known as GPFS 4.1.1.3. The backup functions we support with this client include our normal standalone backup, or if you're using Spectrum scale file systems, we can do the MM backup, and that'll include our AF environments. We also support our journal-based backup. Another feature which will come into play once we have PTFs coming out on this client is you will be able to push those PTFs out to an existing Spectrum Protect client. Moving on to slide 18, for our Spectrum Protect for Space Management on Unix Linux, we've added ZLinux support. This is for your Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.1 and our SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 12. We have file system type of the GPFS 4.2 or Spectrum 4.2, which just GA'd also in fourth quarter of this year. Now the functions on this Z Linux support for HSM are equivalent to what you'd see on our Linux for X system HSM support. This does include spectrum scale policy engine driven threshold migration. For the backup functions, we can do either our spectrum protect client standalone backups, or you could do the MMM backups, including AFM environments. We do support the SOBAR disaster recovery. All of the space management nodes in a mixed cluster have to have the same operating system type. Moving on to slide 19. Another enhancement to our HSM on Unix Linux is support for small file support. What's historically happened is that Spectrum Scale 4.1 and newer stores the data of small files in the metadata area. This is the inode table. It doesn't store small files in a data area on the file system. The size that's allocated to these files is actually zero. So prior to Spectrum Protect 714, we did not allow the migration of these small files. And the reason for that is migration didn't free up any space. However, now with Spectrum Protect for Space Management 714, we do allow for the migration of these zero bytes files. And the reason for that is some Customers like to do a pre-migration of all the files utilizing Spectrum Protect for Space Management. And this way you have a valid copy of all those files inside of your Spectrum Protect server. We also have customers who use SOBAR, which is the scale out disaster recovery tool. And they want to make sure that the Spectrum Protect for Space Management has copied all of the files to our Spectrum Protect server. Another use case we see for this is the Spectrum Archive integration with our Spectrum Protect for Space Management wants to have the ability to migrate all the files to LTFS tape. On our HSM for Windows platform, we have some logging enhancements. Previously, if a customer was doing problem analysis and had to collect traces, these traces would get very large and they would often wrap and that would cause data to be lost for the tracing information. So in order to preserve these traces, we have now the ability to turn off wrapping. And the way you would do that is go into Tools, Preferences, and then unclick this Wrap Trace file. You can then set a maximum file size. And what will happen there is a new file will be created once the current file has reached the maximum file size. And that file will be appended with a date and time stamp. This wrap the trace file does not apply to admin logs. And the admin logs contain things like error and warning messages. This is only for trace files. And with that, I'd like to thank you. Once again, the big items for 714 Spectrum Protect are our ability to do clusterware backups and the new introduction of the NAS availability and the custom and out of the box reports in our operation center. Be sure to check out the YouTube by Sean Sperry. It will cover the other new features in 714 in our virtual environments product and our snapshot product. Thank you.